Amazonians, welcome on board. This is uh, again Major General Vela. I have come today to preach our unity and how we are going to do it, how critical, how important, and how strategic it is, and why we need to do this at this time. I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, this is going to be a 30 minute press. I cannot go above one hour. Again, I repeat, I would not be able to go today above one hour. I've said that so many times, and I always go above, but today, no. Uh, so I want to thank you people. Today I'm reporting from Florida state of uh, USA, this United States of America, Florida. Exactly, I'm in Miami today. I am doing this live talk show from Miami, Miami Beach, Florida, United States of America. That's where I am uh, anchoring right now. Uh, fellow brothers and sisters, I want to thank you all for your support. I want to thank you all for all that you have been doing in this revolution. You have done all your best. You have given all your best to the nation. And the nation is what it is today because of your effort, your collective effort, and because of your sacrifice. I call it ultimate sacrifices. So I want to thank you all. And so that is the reason why I have come here uh, to preach this unity that uh, I'm about to share today. I want to thank Mark Barreta, who actually uh, say Amazonian leaders, Amazonian group, uh, who really care about this struggle, must come together. And so, uh, me being one of the key, uh, one of the key members of one of the most greatest uh, group in the revolution, I have come here to preach that unity. And I want to let Amazonian know that our unity is not unity without focus, not unity of purpose. But we unite like people that have brain, like people that are not amber fools, like people that are not angry fools. And so, I've come here again to use my mouth, to use my my mind, to uh, to brief Amazonians on how actually a good unity should look like. Uh, today it is very uh, it could be very shameful to us if we don't unite after seeing sudan south sudan leaders coming together but there's something i want to i want to let us know before i am trying to say in the next 20 minutes why we must unite and so i urge each and everyone to share this show because facebook has made sure that uh, you know what is going on in facebook uh, they have crippled this facebook is crippled uh, actually uh, uh, they have limited viewers in this platform i saw the message coming from maybe two days ago about that and so you will do all your best to share to all your platform, to all your Facebook pages, and to all your um, uh, all your WhatsApp groups. And so please, for the next two minutes, do the sharing. And so I continue to say why we must unite. And then I preach the gospel from South Sudan, why the South Sudan leaderships are coming together today. So please, fellow brothers and sisters, share for the next two minutes. Sit down, 
So I want to thank all of you people that are sharing. Thank you for sharing. Keep sharing so that we can uh, share this Facebook uh, as, you know, we build our viewers. I will not be up to one hour live today for what I think it should be 30 minutes because this is very strategic. What I'm about to say is very, very strategic. Um, so please, uh, everyone should continue to share. I'm sharing also in uh, some few groups so that we can continue from there. Eros. 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 Come here. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. I have also done some sharing. Fellow Amazonians, looking into our unity, uni, uh, unity affairs, looking into the things that have hindered us from coming to unity, we cannot proceed without looking at the foundation of the cause of this unity. For us to solve the problem of unity in Amazonia, then we therefore need, as a people that are already educated in this struggle, we need to look at what fractured us, how did we end it to where we are, because if we don't know that, and if we don't acknowledge, and if we don't accept, we are not going any further. And that's why I want to say what I will say today. Also, starting for three years, three years continuously in the struggle, I have the credibility to speak about this because I've seen all corners. Even certain things that I see and I don't talk, I see it, trust me. Even the things that I propagate, I know I propagate it. Even some that I don't, I know. Even when we do propaganda, we know. When we do conspiracy, we know. When we speak the real truth, which I love so much, called merciful truth, we know. And so... I want to tell you, my Amazonians, that I have credibility to say what I want to say today about our unity. Today, I have seen social media, you know, everywhere about South Sudan leaders coming together. One thing we want to acknowledge from South Sudan before we go ahead of time, I want to say here, and me in person here, South Sudan leaders come together for one reason. They all fought together to liberate South Sudan. But there is one person who thought he could enjoy power alone. There's one person who thought he has monopoly of power. There's one person who thought that he has the government to rule over South Sudan. But there was one that gave so much to liberation than to governance. There was one that knew that after liberation, there will be governance. And therefore, they concentrated only in liberation without anything in government. And as soon as they had their independence, those who claim that they have legitimacy over government went for that and we are ruling the South Sudan. Those who fought and liberated South Sudan, who stood at opposition, became so tough and so strong in politics after revolution. And therefore, the, the government of South Sudan discovered that the people of Sudan are about to open their eyes and see the reality that those who represent as opposition are actually those who took their time to be fighting for independence at the time of independence. At a time when they are about to change the narratives, the South Sudan government discovered that they will lose everything. And therefore, there's no any other choice than to share power. Today, we are talking about power sharing and unitary government in South Sudan. If the people who fought to have independence stood and just lie down, some people who believe in government could have continued to enjoy as if they fought alone by themselves. Now, I want to speak so that we relate to our struggle today. 
Remember in South Sudan, there was no leader that stole 500,000, 500 million. This, that did not happen to them. The problem to them was that they all fought for independence. And when they arrived, some people decided to cling to power. And so the ones that we are not able to have power again uses the same acres, same guns and bullets to take power and have a unitary sharing of government. Don't forget that as Amazonian people are defending homeland today, no one has monopoly of guns and bullets. Don't forget, they are not idiots. Ground Zero is fighting very well to have the independence. Don't think Ground Zero are idiots. If they are idiots, they could have dropped the guns to Atanga Nipo like the Yane Kawas and Namberes. If they are amber fools, they could have listened to bilingualism and multiculturalism commission. If they were amber fools, they could have listened to the disarmament commission. Did they listen to that? After La Republic has promised them jobs and everything, promised them a lot of good stuff, our soldiers in Ground Zero being focused have, they decided to rubbish Cameroon to fight for independence. And if you think that they will fight, finish, and then you will camp, and then be the government, I'm telling you that I shall stand on the side of Ground Zero, and they will use the same acres, and they will not be power sharing or any unitary government. They will just wipe the people that want to sit abroad and claim. They can come tomorrow and sit to be government of Amazonia. I'm telling you that I myself will lead a rebellion to wipe away. There's no sharing. Wipe. I say wiped. If we come to sharing, they will just come to wipe you. That's it. Because they are all fighting today, giving their life. Ground Zero is losing lives, sleeping in the bushes, receiving bullets every day, and you sit abroad and you think you can form a government, a virtual government or a, 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 a internet government to come and take over. The cause of our struggle, the cause of unit of division in this struggle is the so-called visual government. If you do not accept this, then we will keep on crippling. The cause of the division, division that we have now is the useless internet government that we have in this revolution. And those are people that have never accepted to come under anyone. Those are people who believe that there is only unity when people come under them. These are the people that have caused problems. Ebenezer Akwanga has run behind them from the first conclave to second conclave to third conclave to fourth conclave. Dr. Cho Ayaba with Agos have run, they run behind them. First conclave, second conclave, third conclave, fourth conclave. Everyone, Bo Habit, Maurice has run behind them. First conclave, second conclave, third, fourth, fifth. You have uh, 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 John Baakoro behind them from first to, to, to fourth conclave. When is the first time these people went behind anyone in the revolution? These are the power mongers. These are people that have salvaged our unity. These are people that have caused so much confusion in Amazonia by their power mongering. And if we don't accept that, I'm telling you, you are going to suffer and suffer like South Sudan until one day our soldiers will take up the AKs and guns and say, enough. And I will be behind them. I want to declare that I will lead a rebellion against such a mafia government abroad tomorrow. I will be the rebel leader. I want to say, I want to declare here because these are people that have desecrated unity. They have destroyed unity. And when I look at all the groups in the revolution, only some particular people have given ultimatum to people and forcing people to join them. These are power mongers. They will only believe unity when people come to them. And for them, the world unity exists only when they are, leader, when they are the leaders. The world unity exists only when everyone, all the amber fools, anglo fools, come under them. That is the way they call it unity for themselves. We want to say that anglophones are not anglophones. Amazonians are not amber fools. They are educated people. Fellow um, um, uh, 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 Amazonians, if you do not believe this truth, you will never have the unity you have today. And so we want to tell Mark Barretta, we have listened to it. Calling for unity is something that we did. We were unity ambassadors. They proved to us that if at the time when we were preaching unity and standing as neutral activists, they did everything possible to wipe out all the groups that exist. Today we find ourselves inside groups today because it was power, balance of power. We came to give balance of power. You will want a group that has ADF in Grand Zero like AGOPC to be wiped out from the revolution. When we know that AGOPC is the center of the revolution that the Republic is afraid of. Because after Ayok Seseku Tabi, who do you think is in Amazonia? They kidnapped our leader Ayok Seseku Tabi. If the AGOPC have not existed, La Republic and the fake leaders could have impeached Seseku and that was the end of our revolution. And Dr. Cho Ayaba came in to say, to say Seseku must be freed. That Seseku and everyone must be freed. This is the biggest news for Amazonian people. If you love Seseku Ayoktabi, 
lot of people who are standing to say they will fight till the last man standing until Ayok Sesekutabi and cabinet members and Tassan Griffith and Manto BBCs must be freed. There are some people that will never mention Seseku again. You know, they impeach it. They have never mentioned Manto BBC again. They've forgotten about our prisoners. They will never mention about your prisoners. And today, and today you have seen the chaos they have caused, division they have caused, and all the nasty behaviors they have bring in this revolution. They act the same like the army of preoccupation. If you do not accept at what they ask you to do, to come under them, then they will ban you. And if they ban you and you continue to prospire like ADF, then they will come and kidnap or kill your soldiers. Is that not how La Republic did? La Republic did what to consortium. They tried to ask consortium to listen to one and indivisible Cameroon. Consortium said, no, listen, I'm the voice of the people. I can only do what the people want. What did they do? They banned the consortium. When they banned consortium and consortium insists, what happened? They arrested and kidnapped Bala and Fontem. The Kofam Revolution, Manjo Bibi is kidnapped. Three congrats, kidnapped. The same thing has happened in the revolution. When the, this gang of thieves and embezzlers in the revolution banned the Sokadev, the ADF, AMF, when they insist, what happened? They went and tried to buy their general. When they buy their commandos and commandos accept, then they will use commandos to come back and kill their, their colleagues. It happened in Batibo in Gusan. We know the truth. What happened in Batibo in Gusan? All that we are killed. Tell me which soldier in Gusan that was killed as not ADF. I will go back to my mother's home. Which soldier in Gusan was killed as not ADF? All those commander Tiger BAB, it is our soldiers. You came and bribed them, give them matriculation. You turn them to fight their brothers and kill them. What you do is that you don't care about their life. All you want to do is eliminate anything about ADF. Even if it means sacrificing your wife to eliminate ADF, you will do it. Paul Beer has eliminated his wife, Shanta, um, Irene Beer, for, to, for, to, for one and indivisible Cameroon shit. Nasty politics. And so I'm here to say that nasty politics must not be accepted in our, uh, in our country. So long as I'm concerned. There is nothing like gross human rights that we will accept. No genocides. This will not happen so long as I'm concerned. So I want to tell those people, those morons that can form a visual government to destabilize our nation and cause confusion that I myself will be the leader of the rebellion against them. And there is nothing like power sharing or unitary government with them. All I want to know, to let them know, is that Ta Satan will wait for them. Ta Satan will be the only person that will receive them in his hell. And for Ta Satan to receive them, it will be left for people like me, and the valiant soldier of Ambaland that are fighting and giving their lives today. No one sit abroad and even try to compare with Amba soldiers in Ground Zero. No one want to compare himself with our valiant soldiers that are holding homeland, making sure that homeland is protected, defending our women and children. And some people will sit and form a virtual government and want to destabilize our nation, just like Cameroon want to do. And we will sit and say, oh, these are people, oh, they are holy people. Let me tell you, give me a break. I want to thank the people of Sudan because if the opposition in Sudan did not stand tall and using the same AKs they fought for independence, they could have shit on their face and arrested them, kidnapped them and put in, gen in dungeons for life and impeaching them. If the people of Sudan were rough, did you ever hear that a South Sudan, another gang impeach another one? No, you did not hear. That's why unity was very easy with them. Did you ever hear that one embezzled my trip to Buya in Sudan? No, you did not hear that. That's why unity was possible. Did you ever hear that another one was burning another one? No, that's why unity was possible. Did you hear that another one kidnapped 39 soldiers of another one and killed? Even with his own soldiers inside, he went to just, in the desperation to eliminate the soldiers of his own opponent, you decided to kill them plus your own children. Is that not salvage? Is that not nasty? Is that not bad that we, know we must not tolerate in our nation? We have practiced a lot of tolerance, and so this is the end. I want to thank Mike Barreta. I want to thank everyone that believe in unity in Amazonia. We listen to you. We have never failed you. So Mark Barreta, we are in unity. We have full and critical targeted unity with Ayok Seseku Tabi, the face of the revolution. It is our duty to free him, despite all the incarceration and all the demonization, all the blackmailing that some people have given to him. It is our duty to make sure that Ayoxe Sekutabi and cabinet members are freed. It is our duty to make sure our pals are freed. It is our duty to make sure that our women and children are secured. And so I want to stand here as an egocist, fellow Mandela, as a powerful ADF to say that we are in full flesh collaboration with Seseku Ayok Tabi because we love unity. This is a manifestation to show and prove to people that 
ADF AGOC has always gone behind first conclave, second conclave, third conclave, fourth conclave. Why you think ADF used to do that? AGOC did that because they believe in unity. But the only problem is that wherever they go, people want to take our right to self-determination. People want to take our right to freedom of speech, freedom of press. They want to seize all our human rights. And that's why when we refuse, they commit genocide against us. They take out and they, they destroy us and kill our soldiers because they want to practice self-determination. Each and every soldier of Ambaland has freedom to self-determination to choose wherever he want to fight and any corner he want to fight and any group he want to fight. It is freedom of self-determination. This itself is not an Amazonian norm, more or law. This is the international law. That anyone on earth has right to see freedom of self-determination, self-expression, freedom of speech, and the freedom of coexistence. You will not assimilate the people. Assimilation is a crime. And so one of the signals that have that has destroyed our unity is assimilation. The assimilation tendencies of the fake media government that have tried everything to assimilate everything under their canopy has caused so much division in the revolution. When we talk about unity, I want also flashback at the consortium. There was no time consortium as the Okada trade unions, lawyers, teachers to come under them. Their action clearly, lucidly, concisely brought every stakeholders and every trade union together under them. In so fellow Amazonians, when we want to ask ourselves, how did we end here? What happened that we found ourselves in this nasty, this division? We will then flash back to people who try to use all forms of power, all forms of impunity, subjugation of, to, of people to torture, like what has happened in my state in Buri, where soldiers of Ambaland come and torture civilians. Why civilians must take the guns and give to these people that are innocent? Beat civilians to an extent where a woman has to strip naked and open her private part to them. In in, uh, in an act of cursing. These are things that our mothers should not do. If our mother will have to curse one of us defending, that is already a problem right there. We came to this struggle that our people will never ever have headaches again. That we will never treat our people as if we, our soldiers, are foreign in our land. We cannot turn our soldiers to be island people in our land. Foreign people. They can't act like apes. They cannot act like the army of preoccupation. We came to the revolution that our people, our civilians must be treated with respect. And so anyone that is willing to practice mayhem, to practice acts of division, torture and impunity to our people, those are acts that have caused so much division in this struggle. And so we want to remind all our soldiers, we don't care wherever you belong. The way you treat civilians determines if you are going to live to see independence. The way you treat your civilians determines if you are going to live tomorrow. Your lives are simply and honestly crystal clear in the hands of your civilians. Remember that your civilians are those who know your ways in and your ways out. Remember your civilians are those who know your camps. Remember that your civilians are those who know where you recite. You will therefore not want to cause any conflicts or any friction with your civilian. And don't mastermind one civilian. Don't think because the poor man you can treat him and he has nothing to say. Let me tell you, the poor people have become so smarter than the rich people. And so I want all of you people to think and reason very well. For any act that you do, do not forget. Your civilians have your life in their hands. For whatever you do, don't forget the way you treat civilians' population. Determines if you shall live and live and live. So I want to beg on all amber soldiers, treat civilians and population like you treat yourself. Do unto others what you will love it done unto you. You must therefore practice that fundamental law of morality to your civilians. You must therefore understand that civilians are the reason why we are fighting for this wonderful freedom. We must all master the 
art of war. And one of the prerogatives or the maxim of the art of war is the bond between the citizen and the nation. The bond between the civilians and the defense forces. The coalition between the population and those in the leadership. The adhesion and cohesion between the stakeholders, trade unions, and those who believe they are the system. And therefore, the amber soldiers are our first system, our first institution at this time, because we must defend, secure, and protect. If we don't secure, defend, and protect, we will never have anything called our land. And therefore, I stand here today to say, yes, we accept unity. Yes, we love unity. And yes, we have always loved unity. And that's why we have always been behind the fourth conclave, the second conclave, the third conclave, and the fourth conclave. And yes, that's why we went to Washington Unitary Conference, despite the fact that those who are power mongers destabilized the Unitary Conference by taking it from Canada to Washington, D.C. in the United States. We put it in Canada because we saw Canada as one of the neutral grounds. We put it in Canada because we saw that in the spirits, whatever will take place in Canada might last longer. It was a vision. Some people manipulated it and maneuvered it from Canada without clutch, without brakes. They maneuvered it, risking the situation, and brought it to Washington, D.C. Just two days later, it was killed by the same people. Fellow brothers and sisters, what is it we have that we haven't done in this struggle? We have given our best, and we want to assure you that we will continue to give even the best of all the best. We want to assure you that we will not look back because we know our people's life, the blood of our people can never go for free. Even if we want to look at those who are alive today, I want to give up because those who are alive today are not doing the right thing. Let me tell you, for the sake of those who are gone, for the faithful departed, for those whom our in-house in -house fighting has killed, like what happened in Bui, for those who have been killed by the Republic and the terrorists, like what happened in Santa Pinyin in Menka, like what happened in Donga Mantu and Nga Buye a few days ago, we will never look back. Fellow brothers and sisters, we understand the enemy's desperation. The enemy is the one that practices and teaches this division in this struggle. And therefore, it's not a surprise to us that we have division today. Because the enemy has never slipped in, in any form. The enemy has always tried as much as possible to make sure that we remain di di divided, to make sure that we remain not together, to make sure that we don't we are not consistent in what we are fighting for. And therefore, today, I want to urge each and every one to ask yourself, what brought you in the struggle? Because of the blood of your people, the innocent life. You came to struggle because you don't want your people to suffer again. You did not come because you want to free me. Some of us, everyone living abroad in diaspora are already freed. They are enjoying a form of freedom. No matter whatever, whether they are living as homeless people or not, those who are abroad have a form of freedom. At least they are not being killed. At least they have surety of their lives. But those in Ground Zero do not even know left and right if they will live today, live tomorrow, or they will have any casualties coming. And therefore, we are bound to do the best for our people in Ground Zero. Yes, ABOC, ADF embrace unity. And that's why we stand against those who impeach Ayok Seseko Tabi because those are power mongering. If you are not a power monger, why will you go and impeach another one? Why will you ban another one that does not even affect your well-being? Because you want all the funds and money to come under you. Because you go to TV and you cry, give me your money, give me your money. If you don't give me your money, we will abandon this thing and ask Paul Beer for Federation. And ask Paul Beer to forgive us. I want to assure Amazonia we will never ask any forgiveness from Paul Beer. I want to assure all Amazonians that we and Paul Beer have no affairs. We have nothing in common again. We are done with Paul Beer. So I'm begging each and everyone here to embrace the unity. Stand with the unity. We are on our own. We have always been on our own. And we continue to be on our own. Today, tomorrow, and even after when we arrive. Fellow brothers and sisters, thank you for the sharing. Thank you for all your participation. Thank you for everything that you have done to this revolution. We are in unity with Ayok Seseku Tabi and cabinet members. We are in unity with all our prisoners of war. Everyone that is jailed in the colonial dungeons and prison. We will stand and batter the enemy in trenches. We will stand and batter the enemy in any way in our amber land, in all corners. And we have 
the ability to cross and we are going to do that in due time we have the ability we now have the ability to cross the lines and we will do that diligently at any time t again we now have the credibility and the ability to cross the line we will do that diligently slowly but surely at appropriate time we want the enemy to understand that our power has soon uh, has soon has been has been uh, uh, tripled we want to let the enemy know that our tenacity has been quadrupled we want to let the enemy know that we are not capable of having highly improvised and targeted materials that do not miss we want the enemy to know that our level of education in war art has increased let our enemy know that it is the last call for them to exit the territory we will not deter for free we will only say it in terms of geneva convention if i have the ability to produce atomic bomb i will have to let you know that i have it so that when you approach my territory you know i can pull that trigger on you so we want to let the enemy know that now we have been improvised and that the enemy should step in our country with a lot of care with a lot of caution with a lot and lot of because we are capable of doing and undoing at this time we have suffered a lot we stood our grounds in the past three years there is no time we have looked back the enemy should understand now that we have become professional in what we are doing because the game of freedom is a game which no one on his senses can accept to be compromised the life of our people is the ultimate the life of our people is the last thing that we have and when you waste the life of our people we will tell you that you will waste till the last man standing and therefore we are capable now of very improvised and targeted etilaries and so we have unanimously declared Amazonia as a no-fly zone to Cameroon Cameroon will no longer fly across any amber airspace we will strike everything down with our drones and we are already capable of air strikes we want to let Cameroon know that none of their copter military jets or any flying object should pass in Amberland that one we are saying it on the 21st of February 2020 that Cameroon has lost legitimacy over the territory that we now have full flesh legitimacy over our nation and that our people have the ability now to decide what happened in Amberland and that no alien or any foreign a cake dilapidated and outdated morons have no say so far as our land is concerned today the 21st of february 2020 friday exactly 6 p.m florida time miami we are saying that there is no business with cameroon it is exactly eight minutes past 12 midnight in amberland we are repeatedly saying that there is no treaty of any union between amazonia and french cameroon we don't have that union treaty and therefore the fake union union was mafia not only mafia but that fake union was a an international conspiracy we have already diagnosed the problem the international conspiracy of course and we have prognosed the lasting solution two separate countries that we have to go their fat and big ways two separate country french and english has nothing in common not even in their definite articles not even in their punctuations we are completely separate people not even united in culture not even in the type of food we eat like you can see my regalia this regalia here cannot be stained with terrorists that kill the people the culture we have that we inherited from our forefathers is so rich that we cannot allow that culture to mingle with killers and terrorists we are bound to protect our legendary protect our blueprint protect our heritage and make sure our culture linguistic and every value that of all our human dictings are well protected and by so doing we are completely a separate entity 
We are completely a separate nation. In fact, we have gone our separate way. And therefore, unanimously, we are asking the international organization that plunge us into this art that they will have to need to throw to us a possible in a referendum. In that referendum, our people will determine the final journey. We are asking the UK government, the House of Lords, the UK Parliament. We are asking America, the US Congress, the US Senate, and the White House. We are asking Germany, Norway, Finland, and Belgium. We are asking any people, the people that have human feelings, all the intergovernmental organizations, the FBI, CIAs, the Amnesty International, to come and make sure that they propagate this referendum. We are asking the BBC, CNN, the Fox News, the Reuters, the Voice of Africa, the New York Times, and other mainstream medias to propagate, to end the impunity and subjugation that Cameroon government has given to our, our people. Torture of humans is not accepted in 21st century. And therefore, fellow brothers and sisters, fellow comrades, accept the unity. The Egopsis, Mandela's, ADF accepted the unity with Ayok Sese Kutabi and Comrade Yerima Daphne. Fellow brothers and sisters, unity cannot be anyhow more important than when you unite strategically. We cannot unite like fools and idiots. If we unite like fools and idiots, we are going to be bundled at any time, T. But you know, protection of our personal lives is an asset to this struggle. And so if you unite with something that you are not even sure of whether you, they are going to bundle you and extradite you to Yaoundé, then you are throwing a glass and catching it in a rocky mountain. You are throwing a, the last glass you have in your hand. You are throwing it and catching in a rocky mountain. You know you missed to catch. The glass is gone. And so our struggle at this time is like glass or like an egg, which we must protect. And so our unity must be critical, targeted. Our unity must be strategic. Unity of results. Collaboration of results. Collaboration of purpose. Unity of purpose. We can unite like sheep. We can unite like idiots. We can unite like we don't know the way in and the way out. Unite like people that have been educated in the struggle. I stand here today to tell you all Amazonians, embrace the unity. Stand with the unity. Let us arrive bigly and fatly. I want to thank all of you that have participated in this show. I want to thank all of you for sharing, continue sharing, continue inviting. I am Major General Vela for Amazonia. Thank you so much, fellow brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, fellow Amazonians. I urge each and everyone to practice random act of kindness to our people. I urge each and everyone to unleash and help in one way or the other, especially financially. Help because without materials, without firepower, the international community will see doubt if we are able to govern ourselves. But when we have what we can use to secure our territorial integrity, secure our borders, our entries and exits, then the international uh, organizations and the governments will now see us as a people that are able to govern ourselves. And so unity in a critical direction. Because remember, the international organizations and government are watching us closely. And when they finally see us unite in one direction that is winning, and not uniting with enablers or people that have caused pain within us, or people that don't even understand the art of war, then the international community will be taking us for a joke. But when we continuously unite for whatever bring result in Ground Zero, we cannot unite with people who don't even want to give anything in Ground Zero. Think about that. You can't unite with anyone who is not willing to unleash the money that you contribute to. You want to unite with people that are able to unleash the offer tree that you give. Send it to Ground Zero in material form or in whatever forms. You don't want to unite with somebody who so much like money and love money more than the life of our people. This is one thing you have to understand, my people. If I take people's money, you know money is something that is very temple. It only takes few people to really take money and give it out. Because not everyone can do that. And so I am begging all of you to participate. I'm begging everyone to continue to support. Support. Remember the story of the rich man and the poor man in the Bible. The poor man died, went to heaven. The rich man died, went to hell. Because he had money to help and he didn't help. God told him that you have to use your conscience because you will be judged and salvation is personal. Now thinking that your salvation is personal and you, we all shall be judged. Do the right thing at the right time. Support the truth. 
support what is real in this struggle. Thank you so much. This is live from United States of America, Florida State, Miami Beach. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And we shall be talking from all around the world in the upcoming days and weeks. I want to thank you so much for the support you have given. I want to thank all Mandela's. Mandela's, no one has done better. I've always respect you because you have done what no one could think you could do. There are few of you, but you have proven to be so tough and rigid. Not only you are in way to surprise Bui, you are also on the way to surprise Fako. Thank you so much. I speak and connect to every day with the Secretary General, the, the, the Honorable Secretary General, and all the programming are on the way. Everything is on point. Everything is moving on smoothly. And I will brief you as soon as possible as the Lord's want it be. We continue to pull our resources so that soon we can also talk from FACO. Remember that we don't discriminate. Whatever we do in the savannah area, we do that in the equatorial area of Amazonia. Whatever we do in the northern zone of Amazonia, I mean, the same thing we have to do to the southern zone of Amazonia because Mandela's do not discriminate. And also, I want to use this opportunity for us to congratulate the appointment of Comrade Capo Daniel. Capo Daniel joined the ADF as the deputy chairman, the deputy chairman in charge of the northern zone to unite all the forces of Amazonia and the northern zone and this will help to stop and eliminate the in-house fighting. This will stop and eliminate the act of brothers taking brothers' life. This is the mission and the task to Capo Daniel. We want to stand on this platform also and let Capo Daniel know that he has our baptism. He has our blessings. And we shall stand behind him and support him wherever and in whatever he needs to complete the job and the task. We want to thank Capo Daniel. He has been the first Amazonian to hold a position in two legitimate groups in the revolution. We have two legitimate groups in the revolution. The IG of Ayok Seseku Tabi and uh, A. Govsi, Dr. Cho Ayaba. And Capo Daniel is one of the first citizens that has united, has done a lot towards unity. Standing with Ayok Seseku Tabi, standing with Ayaba and putting all their hands up. Some people I know will have said, why should Capo Daniel hold two positions? Well, the two positions are not in one group. If they were in one group, we will, we will start deliberating. The act of Capo Daniel having a position in Ayok Sesekutabi and Ayaba is what we are calling collaboration and unity. It is the clear and honest exemplary that we must have to copy. We have come to sh collaborate, share intelligence, so we shall arrive. Remember, Capo Daniel does not have any salary from any of this. And so, we cannot, if there was salary from them, we would say, why should Amazonian be paying this person two salary when other people don't have jobs? And so, this is pro bono. This is free, voluntary. And so, we are not already in the normalcy or after independence that we have to take time to look at things like this. Anyone that stands for unity, you can use whatever rather. If you stand in all the groups and you suddenly unite all the groups together, you are welcome. You will even have the peace plan for Amazonia. So the peace price, I uh, sorry, the peace price, peace, peace price. Capo Daniel could win the Nobel, Nobel uh, Peace Prize for Amazonia tomorrow because he's able to unite. And that's why he is in charge of the northern area, area forces to unite them to stand together. Just like he did in Boyo. Capo Daniel has a background of unity. Capo Daniel has always, even though standing with Seseku, he stood with us ADF. To fight any act of impunity in Amberland. And so Capo Daniel is well suited for the job. We want to thank the governing council, Dr. Cho Ayaba and the cabinet and everyone there that took such a wise full decision. When some people like me have refused to take position, and some people like Capo Daniel are willing, very willing to take their position and take responsibilities, we want to thank them because that is what some of us cannot do. That is what some of us don't have the powers or some of us don't have the might to do. And so we want to thank Capo Daniel that has that might and that willingness to do that. We want to thank him. Thank you so much, Capo Daniel, and we will stand with you. Our blessings and all our might is with you. For wherever you will need assistance, we shall stand beside you. For wherever you will need help, we shall stand with you to make sure that we succeed bigly and fatly. Fellow Amazonians, without not withstanding, 
All of you, you know you are in this revolution. No one in this revolution can say I don't have any position. Because we, as me standing here, this is already my position doing what I know best. And you all watching and you all participating, one way or the other, you already know what you are at best. And so continue in that spirit because we all have a natural appointment in the revolution. Just our presence in the revolution is a natural appointment. And so please preserve and protect your national appointment. God bless you. Thank you so much. This is Major General Vela. This is Liberation TV Live, broadcasting from United States, Miami Beach, Florida. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a wonderful time and goodbye.